Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So this week I'm going to be talking about some of my favorite parts from this wonderful book, Getting Personal with Inquiry Learning by Cap Murdoch. So if you're interested in hearing about my favorite parts of this book, then please keep on watching. Okay, so this week I'm going to be talking about my favorite parts uh, about this book. So thank you, Cap, for writing this beautiful book and sharing these wonderful ideas, really practical resources as well with the world. And you can see I've got lots of post-it notes in here, but I'm just going to talk about some of my favorite parts of the book and it starts in the beginning about it called it's called the why not lessons from dissenting voices and so we're always going to have I think dissenting voices when it comes to using inquiry-based learning and Kath addresses quite a few of them which I'm just going to read out without telling you the answer because you'll have to read the book to find out so one objection could be inquiry can be very engaging but engagement can be confused with learning mm. another one is inquiry lacks substance and depth uh, another one is you don't know what you don't know uh, inquiry is great in principle but the reality is that it can't possibly work with one educator and a large class of learners it's just not practical and another dissenting voice could say Expecting learners to figure it out for themselves creates too demanding a cognitive load. We've got another one. Inquiry learning offers too much choice, leaving learners confused and overwhelmed. And following learners' interests makes it too hard to meet curriculum standards. And the last one here, just because you inquire into something doesn't mean you understand it. And so Kath actually addresses each of these dissenting voices. <laughs> And I will leave you to actually buy the book to find out what her responses to each of those objections to inquiry is. Now, the other bit that I bookmark here is this self-reflection um, tool, which is called How You Rate Your Pedagogy. How would you actually rate your own practice? And I love this. So the different criteria are about release, cultivating curiosity, growing learning assets, question, get personal, collaborate, keep it real, notice, think big, and play. And there is a description for each of these criterion. And you can actually self-assess on a scale, uh, which starts at beginning, developing, proficient, or leading. And I thought that was a really useful tool to assess your own practice in terms of leading inquiry. The other bit that I love here, oh, it was this, it was the heart maps. So there are so many practical strategies in this book um, and so many ideas. So I do suggest you buy this book. But one of the um, little strategies that I loved was called heart maps. And I'm just going to read out what Kat says about that. Heart maps, heart maps are a powerful way to help learners make visual both the joys and challenges in their lives. These can be constructed in a variety of ways. The map might be filled with things that the learner has a deep connection with, people, places, animals, objects, songs, books, and experiences that they love. Alternatively, it might be a divided heart map. On one side, the thing that makes their heart sing, and on the other side, the things that break their heart. Both the positive and the challenging can sow the seed for personal inquiry. So I love how the heart map allows us to understand our students more and build that strong relationship and rapport. It's so important that we understand our students as personal individuals. Now, the other part that I love is, is about... The templates here, there are lots of templates that we have permission to actually print out for classroom use for our students. And one of them is called planning my investigation. So asking students to come up with a big question. And then there are some prompts for them to think about what do I think I already know about this? So looking and engaging at prior knowledge and then asking students to look at resources, a few different resources, either from the Internet or from a book or from other resources. And the next template is planning my investigation. What do I need to do 
what do I need to work on as a learner during this inquiry? And they're to do with the, being a self-manager, communicator, thinker, collaborator, researcher, or contributor. And then uh, the rest of the chapter has a lot of templates. I'll just quickly show you. Lots of templates, visible thinking routines to help students plan their learning and plan their journey. Uh, there's also exit tickets. There's ways for students to be able to self-reflect uh, where they are in terms of their learning and understanding. So this is an absolutely wonderful book. Uh, thank you, Kath, so much for sharing these ideas with the world so that we can understand how to embed, incorporate uh, an ethos and belief of inquiry with our students. So thank you so much for joining me again this week, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.